Oh yeah. So today marks one year of ownership of our Gen 3 Raptor. So I thought it'd be a good time to uh, kind of do a somewhat of a long-term thoughts on the truck as a whole. You know, we haven't been able to do quite as much off-road adventures as I would have liked just with uh, life and travel and work and uh, other stuff getting in the way but I, I, I think I've 23,503 miles in one year uh, I think I've put enough seat time behind this thing under uh, enough different circumstances to give a very good synopsis of what you can expect and what the capabilities are from my use case of a Gen 3 Raptor. So, so let's first start off with the majority of the seat time in this truck is spent behind the wheel, commuting back and forth to work and traveling. It's a big truck. It gets relatively uh, decent mileage. Okay, so I run premium in it all the time. You can run regular, you will have some reduced performance by doing that. Um, however, I, I run premium in it all the time. And it's very comfortable, has all the creature comforts. This is the, the big boy package with all the extra stuff, the moon roof, all that, that stuff. Um, I think the uh, going forward though, they kind of scrapped the, the more budget friendly packages go figure but so for traveling uh, and commuting back and forth to work wonderful great truck has uh, you know all the amenities uh, heated cooled seats it's got uh, very comfortable seats in my opinion durable as well lots of room uh, people that sit in the back here from time to time uh, they don't complain about having you know no leg room stuff like that so it's a truck it's a big truck it's a, a, a super crew you know, so you got the same type of uh, room that a, uh, a regular F-150 is going to have uh, in that configuration. I think that the suspension with the Fox uh, adjustable shocks makes for a pretty dynamic experience as far as traveling, commuting, because um, you can have it as plush as you want it to be, or if you throw it in sport mode, you can stiffen it up a little bit. It actually handles uh, relatively well as a for a big vehicle in sport mode. Even in sport mode, it's still a plush ride. Um, the Raptors have been the plushest trucks I've ever owned as far as the overall ride. Lighting, driving at nighttime, in the dark, in the weather, lighting is great. I have played around a little bit with the uh, Forescan, so that's something that you can download and hook up via the OBD port and modify some values. So they have what's called an anti-glare mode. Um, supposedly it's it's available now, um, but prior to it being available, I turned that on, and that really helped with the lighting. The um, exhaust in this thing, so again, for comfort, you can have it as quiet as you want or you can have it as loud as you want. So currently I got it in Baja mode. So, I mean, they, they hear you coming way on down the road, but you can put it in quiet mode or just regular mode and it actually tones it down quite a bit. So, especially like if, uh, so I live in a neighborhood, you know, a lot of times I'm leaving early in the morning or whatever, different times of the night to, to go do stuff and I don't want to disturb the neighbor. So I'll just, you know, I'll turn it down. You can actually set it up where between certain ta hours of the day, if you do the auto start, um, or remote start rather, it will start up in a quieter mode or the quietest mode, I should say. So that's pretty dang cool of Ford to think about that. Let's see here, transmission overall shifting. It's pretty good in sport mode. It can get a little little on the, uh, the harsh side, uh, especially it seems like when the truck is colder temps, the transmission's colder temps, it will kind of shift a little more erratically until it warms up, if that makes sense. Kind of like, a, you know, it'll jerk you around a little more than it, it should. 
Um, but sport mode for the transmission is, is pretty much where it's at, in my opinion. Um, there's, of course, all your other drive modes for towing a trailer and stuff like that. Speaking of towing, let's talk about that. So we tow a 19 and a half foot boat from time to time. I tend to get somewhere in the 10 and a half to 12 and a half miles per gallon towing that boat. Uh, boat's kind of a big thing. It's a center console, so it sticks up and catches a lot of wind. Um, it's not a super heavy boat. I think rigged up with everything. It's um, somewhere around the 3,500 pounds. It's really not heavy, uh, but it tows it easy. It, like I don't really know that it's back there and it, the truck doesn't really squat a whole lot. It squats a little bit with that weight on there, with that tongue weight, but not too much. However, early in August, I went down to Florida to pick up, uh, I have a 1996 Ford F-150 that I inherited from my dad after he passed away that my brother had been working on the past couple years trying to get it roadworthy for me. And I went down there, I rented a U-Haul flatbed trailer uh, which weighed around 2,500 pounds, and then I towed that truck up here. It's a short bed 96 F-150 two-wheel drive with the uh, inline 4.9 liter straight six. And I think total weight was somewhere around 6,500 pounds. And believe it or not, I actually got, I think it was uh, 13 or 13 and a half MPGs. I set my cruise around 65, uh, and it's I-95 heading up from Florida. So it's pretty flat, but, um, but I could not believe that I got that gas mileage towing that truck on that trailer, about 6,500 pounds of weight. Uh, the tow limit on this is I think 8,300 or 8,400, so I still had some room to go, but I will tell you that the tongue weight with that U-Haul trailer was pretty high. I don't know the exact tongue weight, but um, I did squat quite a bit. So if I was gonna tow uh, on a regular basis, that kind of weight, with that type of tongue weight, I would recommend some sort of bags or additional help in the rear end. Um, this is not really a tow vehicle for heavy weights. So you have to uh, kind of keep that in consideration. I mean, it's an off-road vehicle with an off-road suspension. As such, uh, there's some give and take there, all right? So, but uh, if you're worried about buying a Raptor, as far as being able to tow uh, a normal payload of, you know, 3,000 pounds or 4,000 pounds or whatever, it's all in how you, uh, distribute the weight, of course. Don't be too concerned. Now, if you're always towing 6,000 pounds or above, you may want to look at a regular F-150. Problems that I've had with the truck. I've really not had any problems, you know, knock on knock on wood. It's been a wonderful vehicle as far as uh, reliability. I do my oil change. I use Amsoil uh, Full Synthetic and their filters every 5,000 miles, I get that changed. The only issue that I've had to bring it in for service was a couple recalls. Uh, there was one for the tow module that I had to have updated. There was also one for the wiper blades, which I don't know if, uh, supposedly they didn't have the parts or whatever, so I have to revisit that. Uh, other than that, I did have some clunking from the suspension in the rear and they determined that the shocks were defective, so they swapped them out, and uh, that seems to be gone away. That I had done, eh, it was probably 10,000 miles-ish or something like that, 12,000 miles, I don't remember the exact mileage that I had that in. So as far as reliability, I got no complaints. Um, you know, I'm getting ready to do probably a transfer case fluid dump, and I'll probably be doing plugs at some point. Uh, these three five EcoBoost motors tend to benefit from a plug swap out more frequently than what the manual says so um, so I'll probably do that I think my last Raptor I did around 30,000 31,000 something like that off-road capability so let's talk a little bit about that so the only opportunities I've had really to off-road this is out at the beach had it out there a few times uh, a little bit back home in Florida um, some dirt roads and stuff I wouldn't really call it anything sort of serious off-roading. Um, and then also last fall when I was in Colorado chasing some elk and mule deer um, up in the high elevations with snow and ice and stuff like that. And um, I gotta say, I, I mean, it basically, as long as you're not a, an idiot about the way you're driving, um, it uh, pretty much will get you where you wanna go. Out at the beach, it's a lot of sand, so we have to air down. I aired down about 22 PSI all the way around, and that seems to do great. Um, I think the um, uh, this is actually a state park. They do recommend to air down to under 20 PSI, but I just never really had the need to do that. 
and I'll see people stuck there going around some of the bends where they slow down in the soft stuff and get stuck and I, I've never had a problem so uh, if you look back I do got some older videos that show uh, my last Raptor and this Raptor uh, out of the beach a little bit yeah does great there so here on the East Coast we don't have a lot of off-roading or purpose-built off-road roads or trails for big vehicles uh, out west you got open spaces open roads uh, here on the east coast not so much so places like uari which has an awesome trail system is better for atvs and jeeps i mean you know if you got a jeep that's where you're going you're going out to uari um, so you can break your stuff because you already got some pretty rough trails so Colorado you know I, that was a bit of an unknown where we hunted last year was on the opposite side of the mountain range from where we typical typically hunt and it was some pretty narrow roads and stuff with ice and snow and uh, I got some some good pinstriping especially over on the pasture side <laughs> from that trip and um, you know, it was a brand new truck and I freaking, you know, uh, two months later I'd rolled it out there and, you know, put it to the test. So it did great. No complaints. Got me where I needed to go. It was a nice ride. The uh, deep snow mode works great. Uh, I use Baja mode a lot when I'm at the beach and I did use it some on some of the trails, uh, the faster trails out in Colorado before I went to the higher elevations. I try to roll in some footage of some of that stuff. The uh, trail control all right so the cruise control for you know kind of keeping a consistent speed going through think of cruise control under 20 mile an hour or under 25 mile an hour for trails uh works great um, especially in a slippery environment you know it's almost i mean if you're not an expert off-roader you can get in a raptor and using some of the technology you can actually and again not being a not being an idiot about the way you're driving uh, you can definitely put the capabilities to some use. Now trail control is also on some other Ford vehicles and other manufacturers have it as well. So it's not really a new thing. Um, as a matter of fact, my FX4 package truck, the last one of those I had also had it. It was a 17 model. So yeah, off-road capability for what I have experienced with, you know, I, I got to give it uh, five stars on that, five out of five. It, it pretty much uh, did everything I needed to do, and I'm sure that if I had taken it to some more technical areas, it would have accomplished that pretty well. Um, I really wish we had some high-speed trails out here on the East Coast that I could take it to to really, because I think the Raptor where it excels is not rock crawling or you know slow trail riding. It's really you know high-speed stuff. I'm mean, this thing when I'm out at the beach, and I know I'm not supposed to do this when I'm out at the beach. I put it in Baja mode and it just wants to go fast and you're not really supposed to go too fast out there um, on the beach and unfortunately I, <laughs> I kind of I test the limits of that a little bit. I, I really wish we had some uh, some capabilities like that um, or some trails like that out here and uh, on the eastern part of the US that would be great but um, you know unfortunately it is what it is you know I got to move out west if I want to have some trails like that. All right so quality I would say uh, interior quality is probably, it's probably a, I'd give it probably eight out of 10. It's not the best quality interior that I've ever seen, but it dang sure ain't the worst. For a Ford, it's pretty good. Uh, I would say what tops the quality, at least the, the quality of the interior uh, would be, a lot of your luxury cars is gonna have a lot nicer interior, but it's good. I think it's for what it is, carbon fiber, kind of matte carbon fiber a package that this truck has is kind of grown on me a little bit. I really wish the shifter would have been carbon fiber. That would have been nice. Exterior build quality, it's good. I don't have any issues I have read upon of other problems or I have read about other people having problems with things like panel matching up, paint quality. I mean, I did have a lot of water spots on the paint, but I think that's the dealer prep, not, not Ford. Um, I just don't think they washed it very good when I got it. So I had to do some, I had to do some paint stuff before I applied a ceramic coating, uh, some paint correction and whatnot. But, um, but yeah, um, like I said, the exhaust on it sounds really good. You know, no, no weird noises, no, I mean, I'd say I'd give the overall build quality probably a solid eight out of 10. Um, I'm not gonna give it a 10 out of 10, cause let's be honest, I mean, it's still Ford. I mean, they, it's, it's better than the Kia, or, you know, or a lot of other vehicles, but you know, it ain't perfect. You know, there's some things that could be a little nicer on the interior. 
in any event i think it's for what it is and honestly as a truck especially an off-road truck i mean i'm getting out of here i'm getting sand mud you know stuff like that on here so having super fine grain leather and all that in here is probably not the best thing to have anyways so so my thoughts on uh the raptor gen 3 going forward the 22 models they kind of stripped some stuff out then the 23 models and of course all the pricing has went up i'm very blessed that i was able to pick mine up when i did when they first came out um, i really lucked out and um, i have to uh give uh credit to my sales guy and you know who you are over um, at the dealer if it weren't for him i probably and my wife we probably would not have gotten a gen 3 when we did however i not so sure how many more fords i'm gonna buy i've had a heck of a time with one of my other vehicles and getting it serviced at the dealer that i purchased this from we'll see um, i know a lot of dealers are struggling with keeping good people and getting parts and all that stuff i get that but it's been a two-year endeavor with that dealer trying to get their service department to actually give a damn uh, about taking care of their customers so um, because of that I've kind of I've kind of cut them off from buying any more vehicles from them and uh, I definitely won't be back for any sort of service I'm gonna be looking for another Ford dealer in the area for uh, having my vehicle serviced so we'll, we'll see what that see how that works out wife has a 2020 uh, Ford Edge ST and it's been a great vehicle but, but we've had some complaints that haven't been addressed and we've been dealing with them for over a year so continuing on with uh you know the raptors going forward the raptor r was announced earlier uh this year and uh people plunked their money down on that unfortunately it's way out of any normal person's price range even the regular raptor honestly i mean this is the most expensive vehicle i would ever purchase it, it just i know vehicles have gotten really pricey over the last uh 10 years especially um but the raptor r i mean i think ford kind of kind of I like, it's basically the Raptor we have now, but with more power, all right? It's got the GT500 Shelby motor in it. They are going to be faster and it's to compete with the TRX, but they're gonna be producing them in, in much lower quantities. And then you also have the limited availability of the regular Raptor and even more limited availability of the Raptor R. Um, and it's just, a, um, it's just an, a reason for the dealers to charge exuberant amount of prices above the sticker price and i'm all about capitalism and all that stuff but uh, it's the prices i've seen just on the regular raptors you know charging 20 30 000 above stickers just nuts and then the raptor r 50 000 plus above sticker that's just insanity i i i, I just can't comprehend spend that kind of money i mean not that a regular f-150 is cheap i mean you can't hardly get a regular one anymore for under Forty to fifty thousand dollars, and that's pretty stripped down. If you want anything with options, you're going to spend fifty plus. All right, let's see if we can. I mean, this thing gets up and goes for a big ass damn truck. So I can only imagine what that Raptor R is going to feel like driving around. And I know a lot of folks along for that v8 sound but ford did it right with this trombone setup with this exhaust it's i i don't see any reason or a benefit to swap out to an aftermarket exhaust i know there's a few companies that have them for the gen 3s but i just i don't see what you gain maybe make it a little louder but i mean baja mode i mean if you're living in baja mode and you're traveling at highway speeds it does drone i mean it's it's almost like having a, an open exhaust uh even sport mode on the highway um it's a little less um less hard on your ears um but typically in the highway on long trips i'll run it in normal mode that seems to be the the sweet spot for for high speeds long distances and and long driving times Raptor R, it's, it's great. I mean, it's good for Ford. Um, it's going to be a 
fantastic vehicle for Ford to brag about, but nobody's going to have one. <laughs> so I think they're talking about maybe making 3000 a year. I'd be shocked if they make 3000 a year. I mean, even the Gen 3 Raptor, uh, I don't see hardly any on the street. I see a few around, but there's just not that many out there. I know a lot of people are just now getting their 22 models. I have seen uh, that. So maybe Ford is catching up with that but the other thing Ford's been doing with a lot of their other vehicles is deleting the uh, options by you know deleting you know to save on chip usage okay so like rear heated seats and stuff like that they've been kind of skimping on with all their vehicles so if you order a 23 model you're probably gonna be missing some stuff I would think and I know a lot of the 22 models were come uh, came missing stuff uh, for that reason I don't know I'm glad I got a 21 model before they started shutting down a bunch of that chip stuff like i said the raptor r i'm not even even if i had the ability to buy one at msrp one hundred nine thousand dollars is just freaking insane i just can't see spending that kind of money i mean there's been people that have spent that on a gen, regular gen 3 raptor so i guess i can't complain too much but you know it's it, it's it's just insanity uh what they're wanting for uh these raptor r's so Alrighty, so I think I've rambled on long enough. One year of ownership. Uh, very excited to uh, still have it. I, it doesn't feel like it's been a year. This truck still feels new to me. So at, after 23,500 miles, that is a positive. Anytime you can have a vehicle that you've had for a while and it still feels new and you still get excited about it, that's a great thing. I still get excited about this truck every time I get in it. So let me know what you think down below as far as the Raptors, like them, hate them, can't stand them. What your thoughts are? I mean, obviously I'm a kind of a Ford Ford guy, but I like vehicles. I'm kind of a gearhead in general, so I'm always looking at you know all vehicles. But my dad, having been a Ford mechanic for 30 years, I, I tend to migrate towards Ford. But so put your opinions down below. Also, I'd like to know what you guys think the future holds with all this uh, electric vehicle garbage and uh, you know trying to get away from gas motors and and all that I, I i have a funny feeling that we're gonna continue to see the decline of performance vehicles i know dodge has already kind of announced a reduction of their uh, like hellcats and stuff like that um, i think those are going away they are going to keep the trx around for a little longer i don't know how many years they will keep that. The TRX is very impressive. Unfortunately, it's not a very good do everything vehicle. It's got a very small gas tank, um, gets horrendous gas mileage in comparison. It's great for going fast and uh, maybe a little bit of off-roading and stuff, but for somebody that wants the, the, the whole package, I, I don't think the TRX is it. Appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. If there's something else you guys wanna see with the Raptor, uh, let me know down below and appreciate everybody watching and subscribing and i will catch you all in the next video y'all take it easy